Hi everyone, my name is Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. Welcome to the course Introduction to Seismic Design of Structures, Lecture 11-2, Maximum Consider Earthquake 2. Maximum Consider Earthquake corresponds to the earthquake level with 2% of 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years or the earthquake level with return period of 2,475 years. Here are some terminologies for maximum considered earthquake. The first one, maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure. It depends on the location of the site. In Chinese, 正区短周期是最大考量普加速度. Maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for one second period structure. It also depends on the location of the site. In Chinese, 正区一秒周期之最大考量普加速度. Near force adjustment factor for periods with constant spectral acceleration for maximum considered earthquake. In Chinese, 最大考量反应谱等加速度段之近段程调整因子. Near force adjustment factor for periods with constant spectral velocity for maximum considered earthquake. In Chinese, 最大考量反应谱等加速度段之近段程调整因子. These two near force adjustment factors depends on the distance of the site from the active fault. Site amplification factor of maximum considered spectrum for periods with constant acceleration. In Chinese, 最大考量反应谱等加速度段之 Site amplification factor of maximum considered spectrum for periods with constant velocity. In Chinese, 最大考量反应谱之等加速度段等速度段之公子放大系数. These two site amplification factors depends on site classification, whether the site is hard or soft, or located at Taipei Basin. Maximum considered earthquake is an earthquake with 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years or an earthquake level with return period of 2,475 years. Even under maximum considered earthquake, the structure should be designed such that collapse is prevented. For the maximum considered spectrum for sites class 1, 2, 3, we have two parameters. Therefore, we have two parameters to determine maximum considered spectrum for site class 1, 2, or 3. The first one, SMS, maximum considered spectral acceleration of, site, of the site for short period structure. The second parameter, SM1, maximum considered spectral acceleration of the site for one second period structure. And the damping ratio is fixed to be 5% so that the maximum considered spectrum is a function of T, the structural vibration period, the fundamental vibration period of the structure. T0M is not an independent parameter, but can be calculated by this formula, T0M equal to SM1 over SMS. Therefore, we can just use two parameters to fully describe the maximum considered spectrum. And here's the equation for the maximum considered spectrum. Once we have T0M, the spectrum can be divided into four segments. For the first segment, yes, it increases linearly with the structural period T. And the second segment, SAM is a constant and equal to SMS. For the third segment, SAM decreases 
inversely proportional to the structural period T, SAM equal to SM1 divided by T. For the fourth segment, is the lower bound for the maximum considered spectral acceleration, SAM equal to 0.4 times SMS. T here is the fundamental vibration period of the structure, and the unit for T is S second. The damping ratio of the structure is fixed to be 5%, 0.05. Maximum considered spectrum can be divided by can be described can be fully described by two parameters. One is SMS and SM1. SMS, the maximum considered spectral acceleration of the site for short period structure, depends on size mix zone, the location of the site, for distance, the distance of the site away from active force, and site classification, whether it's site class one, two or three. SMS can be obtained by the multiplication of three factors. The first one, SSM, is maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure. And this factor, this coefficient, depends on the location of the site. The second factor, NAM, NA parathesis M, is the near fault adjustment factor for maximum considered earthquake for periods with constant acceleration, and it depends on the fault distance, that's the distance of the site away from the fault. And the third factor, FA parenthesis, parenthesis M, is the site amplification factor for maximum considered earthquake for periods with constant acceleration, and it depends on site classification, whether it's site class 1, 2, or 3. By the multiplication of these three factors, we can have SMS. The second factor is SM1. SM1 is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of site for one second period structure. It depends on seismic zone, the location of the site, for distance, the distance of the site away from the fault, and site classification, whether it's site class 1, 2, or 3. So the SM1 can be obtained by the multiplication of three factors. S1M is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for one second period structure. It depends on the location of the site. The second factor, NV parenthesis M, is the near fault adjustment factor for maximum considered earthquake for periods with constant velocity. And it depends on the fault distance the distance of the fault, the distance of the site away from the fault. The third factor, FVM, is the site amplification factor for multiple, for maximum considered earthquake for period with constant velocity, and it depends on site classification, site class one, two, or three. With the multiplication of these three factors, SM1 can be calculated. Then we consider SSM first. SSM first. Maximum cons SM SSM is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure. S1M is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of one second period structure. And SS SSM and S1 S1M, these two parameters can be looked up from tables according to the administrative units of the site, where, is the, where the town is located, which city is located, or which city it locates. There are four values for SSM, 1.0, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and 0 0.7. And SSM, the unit for SSM is G, gravitational acceleration. And the question here for all of us, SSM larger than SSMD, is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of the seismic zone always larger than the design basis spectral acceleration of the seismic zone. And there are also four values for S1M, 0 0.55, 0 0.50, 0 0.50, 0 0.45, and 0 0.40. And the question here is that S1M, 
Yes, maximum consider spectral acceleration of seismic zone as one m, always larger than the design basis spectral acceleration of the seismic zone as one d. And this value can be looked up from seismic design code table two two one. And here is the distribution of maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period SSM and for one second period S1M. The maximum value for SSM is 1.0G and this is the area close to the active force and the area close to the active force. The second largest one is 0.9G is the white one, is the white one. And the third largest is point AG, is the area located in the northern part of the city and northern part of Taiwan and also the southern part of Taiwan. The small of the smallest one is point seven G is located to the northmost of Taiwan and the southmost of Taiwan. Similarly for S one M, the largest one is point fifty five G and it is the location close to the active force. And the second largest is 0.5G, the white one. The third largest is 0.45G, the blue shaded area. And the least one is 0.4G, and is the green shaded area. And these two figures are taken from the seismic design code figures C2-4 and C2-5. And back to the example, the site located at Ruizui Township, Hualien County. The question is to find the maximum consider corresponding to 2,475 year return period spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure and one second period structure. That is, the question is, what is the value for SSM and S1M? From seismic design code table 2-1, we can look up the administrative area, administrative unit, Yui Township, and it is close to Huadong Area Falls. And from this table here, table 2-1, we can have SSM equal to 1.0. SSM is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure. And also we can look up for S1M, and S1M equal to 0.55 is the maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for one second period structure. And SSM, SSM is larger than SSD. And SSD is given by the previous lectures. And S1M is larger than S1D. And the question then, in this case, SSM is larger than SSD. S1M is larger than S1D. Is it always true? And then we move to the near fall adjustment factors for periods with constant acceleration, NAM, and periods with constant velocity, NVM. And they depend on these two factors, depends on the distance between the sides and the faults. If the site is far away from the faults, the factors, the two factors equal to zero, equal to one. That means that there is no amplification. If the site is close to the to the active force, then the factor becomes higher and higher. If the site is closer and closer to the active force, and the factor, the amplification factor becomes higher and higher. And here we take a uh, Chalong Pool force as an example. R is the distance of the site from the force. If R is larger than 12 kilometers. These two factors equal to 1.0. There's no amplification due to near force effect. When R becomes smaller and smaller, the two factors become larger and larger. And we have the two questions for you. One is SAM does not equal to SAD, or SVM is not equal to an. NVM is not equal to NVD. 
There are two questions for all of you. And this table is taken from the seismic design code table 2-4-1. And we go back to the example. The site located at Ruishui Township, Hualien County, and within two kilometers from Yuli Falls. The question is to find maximum consider near fault adjustment factors for period with constant acceleration and period with constant velocity. That is, what is the NAM and what is the value for NVM? And from the seismic design code table 2-4-7, we have this table for Hualien area fault, including UD fault. And the unit for R is kilometers. R is the distance of the size from the fault. When R becomes less and less, the two factors become larger and larger. And in this question, in this particular question, the distance of the site away from the fault within two kilometers. The site is within two kilometers from UD fault. Therefore, R less than two kilometers. NAM equal to 1.32. NVM equal to 1.50A. And from the previous lecture, we have NAD equal to 1.42. Therefore, NAM is not equal to NAD. And NVM equal to 1.50A. From the previous lecture, we have NVD equal to 1.50A. And in this case, NVM equal to is equal to NVD. And the question is that, in this case, we have MAM greater than and AD. Is it always true? And in this case, we have NVM equal to NVD. Is it always true for all cases? And here, we just summarize what we have got. The first one, maximum spectral acceleration for of seismic zone for short period structure, SSM equal to 1.0, and from previous lecture, we have SSV equal to 0 0.8. And maximum consider spectral acceleration of seismic zone for one second period structure, S1M equal to 0.55. From previous lectures, we have S1D equal to 0.45. And maximum consider near fault adjustment factor for periods with constant acceleration, NAM equal to 1.32. From previous lecture, we have NAD equal to 1.42. Maximum consider near for adjustment factor for period with constant velocity. NVM equal to 1.50A. And in previous lecture, we have NVD equal to 1.50A. From this information, we can calculate maximum consider spectral acceleration of seismic zone with near for effect for short period structure. SS parenthesis M equal to NAM multiplied by SSM equal to the multiplication of this NAM equal to 1.32 and SSM equal to 1.0 the multiplication of these two values equal to 1.32 and from previous lecture we have SS parenthesis D equal to 1.136. Therefore, in this case, SS parenthesis M is larger than SS parenthesis D. Maximum consider special acceleration of seismic zone with near fault effects for one second period structure. S1 parenthesis M equal to NV parenthesis M times S1 M equal to the multiplication of these two values. These two values, S1M equal to 0.55 and NVM equal to 1.50A. The multiplication resulted in 0.869. And from previous lecture, we have S1 parenthesis D equal to 0.711. Therefore, in this case, S1 parenthesis M is larger than S1 parenthesis D. This is always true for all cases. Then we move to site amplification factor. 
There are two factors. Fa is the side amplification factor for periods with constant acceleration. Fv is the side amplification factor for period with constant velocity. Both these two factors depend on site classification, whether it's site class 1, 2, or 3. For hot site, the site amplification factors Fa and Fv are 1 because we use hot site as a reference. The softer the site, the higher the amplification factors Fa and Fv. And this is a table taken from Seismic Design Code Table 2-2A. Once we have SS and the site classification 1, 2, 3, by looking up this table, we can have the site amplification factor for periods with constant acceleration. And site class 1 is hot site, site class 2 is ordinary site, site class 3 is soft site. For maximum consider site class site amplification factor, SS equal to SS parenthesis M equal to NAM multiplied by SSM. Once we have SS and the site classification, looking up this table, then we can have the factor FA. There are two questions for all of you. One is SS parenthesis M. Is it always larger than SS parenthesis D. The second question is FA M is always less than FAD. And this is table, this table is taken from seismic design codes, table 2-2B. Once you have S1 and site classification, by looking up this table, we can have FV is the site amplification factor for periods with constant velocity. S1 for maximum consider site amplification factor equal to S1 parenthesis M equal to NVM multiplied by S1M. Once we have S1 and site classification, by looking up this table, we can have the factor FV. And there are two questions here. S1 parenthesis M, is it always larger than S1 parenthesis D? The second question is that SV parenthesis M, is it always less than FV parenthesis D? In order to classify the site, we should have the mean shear velocity to the depth of 30 meters under the ground. And DI is the thickness of soil layer I, and the unit is M meter. VSI is the shear velocity of soil layer I, and the unit is meter per second. And this is the equation for calculation of VS30. is the mean shear velocity to the depth of 30 meters under the ground. DI divided by VSI is the time taken to travel for the shear wave to travel through layer, soil layer I. And the summation here is the total time taken for the shear wave to travel, travel the depth of 30 meters under the ground. And summation DI equal to 30 meters. Therefore, 30 meter divided by the time taken to travel the 30 meter is the mean shear velocity, Vs30. According to Vs30, we can classify the site into site class 1, 2, or 3. If Vs30 is larger than 270 meter per second, and it is classified as hard site, site class 1, if Vs30 is less than 180 meter per second and is classified as soft site, site class 3. And this information is taken by, is taken from seismic design code section 2.4. And in between, and is classified as the ordinary site, site class 2. The harder the site, the higher the shear velocity, shear wave velocity. The softer the site, the lower the shear wave velocity. Therefore, when 
the mean shear wave velocity is larger than 270, is classified as hard side. If it's less than 180 meters per second, it's classified as soft side. In between, it's classified as ordinary side. In addition to measuring the shear velocity directly, another way is to estimate the shear wave velocity indirectly from the boring hole data up to the depth of 30 meters under the ground. And the shear wave velocity can be estimated. For cohesive soil layer, if n, the n value of from the standard penetration test of soil layer I is less than 2, VSI can be estimated to be 120 QUI to the power 0 0.36. QUI is the unconfined uniaxial compression strength, and the unit for QUI is KGF per cm square. If n value is larger than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 25, VSI for cohesive soil layer can be estimated by 100 times Ni to the power one-third. For sandy soil layer, VSI is estimated to be 80 Ni to the power one-third. The harder the side, the larger the end value of the standard penetration test, and the higher the shear wave velocity Vs, the softer the side, the smaller the end value of the standard penetration test, and the lower the shear wave velocity Vs. We go back to the example. The site locates as Rui Township, Hualien County. The question is to find maximum considered site amplification factors for periods with constant acceleration and periods with constant velocity. That is, what is, what is the value for S FAM and FVM? And the second question is to find maximum considered special acceleration of the site for short period and one second period structure. There's what's the value for SSM and what's the value for SM1. And in this site, the mean shear velocity up to the depth of 30 meters under the ground, Vs30 equal to 661.52 meter per second is larger than 270 meters per second. Therefore, the site is classified as hard site, site class 1. And from the table, taken from the seismic design code table 2-2A, so far we have the site class 1, and we have the maximum considered special acceleration with near fault effect for short period structure, SS parenthesis m equal to 1.32. We have SS 1.32 that's larger than 0.9 and site class 1 so that we can have the site amplification factor FAM equal to 1.0. The site classification factor for periods with constant acceleration FAM equal to 1.0. And from previous lecture we already have FAD equal to 1.0. In this case, FAM equal to FAD. Is it always true? Is it, is it true for all cases? Once we have NAM, SSM, and FAM, then we can have SS, SMS, the special acceleration of the site for short period structure. SMS equal to FAM multiplied by NAM and then multiplied by SSM equal to 1.32. The value, the multiplication of these two values equal to 1.32. And from previous lecture, we have SDS equal to 1.136. And in this particular case, SMS is larger than SDS. Is it always true? That's the question for all of you. This table is taken from Seismic Design Code Table 2-2B. Once we have S1 and the site classification, then we can calculate 
the maximum considered special acceleration with near fall effect for one second structure, S1m equal to NVm times S1m equal to point A69 Once we have S1 parenthesis M is larger than 0.5 and the site class for the site for this example is 1, then we have the value here 1.0. Therefore, the site amplification factor for periods with constant velocity FVM equal to 1.0. And from previous lectures, we have FVD equal to 1.0 and in this particular case, FVM equal to FVD. And the question for all of you, is it always true? Once we have S1 parenthesis as M and SVM and the multiplication of these two factors together, we have SM1, the spectral acceleration of the size for one second period structure. The multiplication of these two values come up with 0.869. SM1 equal to 0 0.869 and from previous lecture we have SD1 equal to 0 0.711 and in this particular case SM1 is larger than SD1 and the question for all of, all of you is it always true? Is it true for all cases? And it is summarized here the step-by-step -step procedure to determine maximum considered spectrum for site class 1, 2, or 3. Step 1, from administration unit, town or district of the site, and look up table 2-1 of seismic design codes to get maximum considered spectral acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure, SSM, and one second period structure, S1M. Therefore, SM and S1 depends on the location of the site. Step 2, from the distance between the force and the site, look up tables 2-4-1 to 2-4-7 of the seismic design codes in order to get near force adjustment factor for maximum consider for maximum consider earthquake for period with constant acceleration NAM and period with constant velocity, NVM. And these two factors, these, these two near fault adjustment factors, depends on the fault, dis the fault distance, the distance of the sites away from the fault. And then we move to step three. From geological, from geolo geological boring, we can measure directly or estimate indirectly the mean shear wave velocity to the depth of 30 meters under the ground for site classification. Step 4, from site class 1, 2, or 3, an SSM equal to NAM multiplied by SSM, SS parenthesis M equal to NAM multiplied by SSM, and look up table 2-2A of seismic design code, we can get the site amplification factor for maximum considered earthquake for periods with constant acceleration, FAM. From site class 1, 2, or 3, and S1 parenthesis M equal to NVM multiplied by S1M. Then look up table 2-2B of seismic design codes, we can get the site amplification factor for maximum considered earthquake for periods with constant velocity, FVM. So far we have SSM, NVM, and FAM. Multiply these two together, we have SMS. So far we have S1M, NVM, and FVM. Multiply these three factors together, we can have SM1. SMS is the maximum considered special acceleration of the site for short period structure. SM1 is the maximum considered special acceleration of the site for one second period structure. And then to the last steps, step 6, 
Maximum consider special acceleration of the site can be obtained by these two parameters, SMS and SM1. From SM1 what S and SM1, we can compute TZM equal to SM1 divided by SMS. Once we have TZM, we can divide this special acceleration into four segments. The first segment is the structural period, less than or equal to 0.2 TZM. And SAM equal to SMS multiplied by 0 0.4 plus 3T divided by TZM. Therefore, SAM increases linearly with the structural period T. In the second segment, the structural period lies between lies between 0.2 TZM and TZM. SAM is a constant equal to SMS. In the third segment, the structural period lies between lies between TZM and 2.5 TZM. SAM decreases and inversely di inversely proportional to the structural period T. SAM equal to SM1 divided by T. For the third fourth segment, T the structural period is larger than or equal to 2.5 TZM. SAM equal to the lower bound. 0.4 multiplied by SMS. This information is adopted from Seismic Design Code Table 2-5B. And then back to the example, the site located at Yuishui Township, Hualien County. The question is to find maximum consider special acceleration of the site. So far we have SMS equal to 1.32, S1, SM1 equal to 0.869 and what's the value of the curve for SAM the special maximum considered special acceleration of the site from SMS and SM1 we can compute TZM equal to SM1 divided by SMS equal to 0.658 second therefore the maximum considered spectrum can be divided into four segments when t is less than or equal to 0 0.1316 second, SAM equal to 1.32 multiplied by 0 0.4 plus 3t divided by 0 0.658. When t is larger than 0 0.1316, less than or equal to 0 0.658, SAM is constant equal to 1.32. When t is larger than 0.658, less than or equal to 1.645 second, SAM equal to 0.869 divided by t. When t is larger than 0.645 second, I think here is a I think this is 1.645 second. SAM equal to 0.528. And here's the graph. Describe the relationship between SAM and T. And there are two, four segments. In the first segment, the special acceleration increases linearly with the structural period T. In the second segment, it's constant. In the third segment, it decreases and inversely proportional to the structural period T. In the fourth segment, is the lower bound for the maximum considered spectral acceleration. And then in the previous lecture, we have already found SAD. You can compare SAM with SAD to find the differences between these two. So far, we have described maximum considered spectrum for site class 1, 2, or 3. And in this slide, we move to maximum considered spectrum for type A basin. The maximum considered spectral acceleration of the site in type A basin, SAM, is also described by two parameters. One is SMS, the same as site class 1, 2, or 3. SMS is the maximum considered special acceleration 
for short period structure. But the second parameter is replaced by T0M. T0M is the corner period between short period and medium to long period. Once we have two, these two parameters, SMS and T0M, the maximum considered special acceleration in Taipei Basin can be fully described, and the information can be obtained from seismic design codes table 2-7b. And here's the equation, the formula for the maximum considered special acceleration of the site in Taipei Basin. And here's the, the graph. Because the damping ratio of the structure is fixed to be 5%, therefore the maximum considered special acceleration is a function of structural vibration period T only. And T is the fundamental vibration period of the structure. And the unit for T is second S. Taipei Basin is further divided into micro zones, Taipei Zone 1, Taipei Zone 2, and Taipei Zone 3, according to the administration unit and from the table 2-6A. And the table here is taken from the seismic design code ta table 2-6C. And uh, the Taipei is divided into three micro zones. Taipei Zone 1, Taipei Zone 2, Taipei Zone 2. And in this table, for each micro zone, SMS and T0M are given. <coughs> SMS for all the zones are 0.8, but T0M for Taipei Zone 1 is 1.6 second, for Taipei Zone 2 is 1.3 second, for Taipei Zone 3 is 1.05 second. And Taipei Zone 3, the site is soft, but and Taipei Zone 2, softer. And Taipei Zone 1, the softest one. The softer the site, the longer the period TCOM. And here are two questions for each, all of you. Is SMS always larger than SDS? Another question is, is TCOM always equal to T0D. And the procedure to determine maximum considered spectrum for type A basin is listed here. In step one, from administration unit of the site, look up table 2-6A of seismic design codes to get the micro zone of the site, whether it's Taipei Zone 1, Taipei Zone 2, or Taipei Zone 3. Step 2, from the micro zone of the site, look up table 2-6C of seismic design code to get maximum considered special acceleration of the site for short period structure, SMS, and the corner period between short and medium to long period, T0M. Once we have SMS and T0M, we can construct the maximum considered spectrum of the site. Therefore, from Table 2-7b, Step 3, of seismic design codes, we can get the maximum considered spectral acceleration of the site, SAM. The unit of SAM is G, gravitational acceleration. And the spectral acceleration is divided into four segments. The first, first segment, from 0 to 0.2 T0M. The second segment, the structural period, from 0.2 T0M to T0M. The, th the third segment is the structural period from T0M to 2.50M. The fourth segment is the structural period larger than or equal to 2.5 T0M. And this is the reference for this lecture. Seismic design codes of building is published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior, and you can download the seismic design codes from this website. And this, uh, this is the video for lecture one in both English and Chinese version.
lecture 2, lecture 3, lecture 4, lecture 5, lecture 6, lecture 7, lecture 8, lecture 9, lecture 10, and lecture 11. And uh, for lecture 11, 2 is the current one. It's still under construction. And in this lecture, we focus on maximum considered earthquake. For site class 1, 2, or 3, the maximum considered spectrum can be specified by two parameters. One is SMS, the other is SM1. These two parameters depends on seismic zone, the location of the site, for distance, the distance of the site away from active force, site classification, whether it's site class 1, 2, or 3. With all this information, we can compute these two parameters, SMS and SM1. With these two parameters, the maximum considered spectrum, design spectrum, for site class 1, 2, or 3 can be fully described. For Taipei Basin, there are another two parameters. One is SMS, the other is TZOM. And SMS and TZOM can be determined by the micro zones of Taipei Basin. And here is the graph for the maximum considered spectrum for site class 1, 2, or 3. Here is the graph for the maximum considered spectrum in Taipei Basin. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.